Hey you guys, welcome back. Um, I'm sorry about that. Apparently, I'm only able to upload videos that are longer than 15 minutes. But um, this is directly from my webcam, so that's probably what happened. Okay, so let's continue where I left off. Yes, I was talking to the last lady about overprocessing, and I was gonna tell um the Caribbean lady something. Um, when we go to relax or here, the hairdressers don't do this, but um doing this can uh, prevent overprocessing. This part of your hair is straight already, okay? Um, you should coat this part, the part that you don't want to get straight again, in um, at a petroleum jelly or something that will coat the shaft in oil so that when um, the straightener, the relaxer washes down, it doesn't cause overprocessing of your ends. So that's a little something that um. You probably should do before you get to the salon because they don't do that for you. Um, and let's face it, it's a, let's face it, it's a bit time consuming for them. Um, so let's continue. Limit the use of direct heat. The use of direct heat should be limited to one to four times per month, or just for special occasions. Direct heat on a daily basis will, de will definitely result in damaged hair. Whenever you use direct heat, remember to use a heat protector prior to the direct heat application. Use a ceramic iron instead of marcel irons. Ceramic irons are less damaging to the hair. Also, um, also never use heat on dirty hair. I was guilty of this one. Um, heat should be used on clean hair only no more than two days after your hair has been washed. Using heat on dirty hair only bakes the dirt into your hair. Dirty hair will burn faster and of course cause damage. Limit blow dryers to once or twice per month. I try as best as I can to air dry at all times. The only time I maybe use the hair dryer is when I go to the salon if I really don't want to go under the hair dryer because if I go on there my hair takes in excess of two hours to get dry. It is best to blow it is best not to blow dry but to air dry all the time. Wearing protective styles. Now um at first when I started seeing all these jazz all these jazz about protective styling I thought that protective styling is just for uh winter but I was reading and it said, um, so I can't remember where I was reading, but it said that um, the protective styling is for extremely hot and extremely cold weather. And we all know we're on the end of extremely hot. So protective styles, styling are those styles to protect um, the ends of our hair. Usually the ends, where the ends are tucked away, protecting them from drying out. These styles involve little or no heat or does not require much manipulation to the hair. When I talk about manipulation, I mean the general combing, styling, just doing stuff to your hair is manipulating it. Styles such as twists, braids, buns, updos, cornrows, or any other style that hides the end of your hair is a protective style. Our, our hair ends are the most fragile because these are the oldest. I said that yesterday. So, um, the bantu knot, the braid out, um, just basic curls or like a bun with their ends um, wrapped around or tucked under is a uh, example of a protective style. I have one protective style up on my channel. Um, I haven't, I've done the braid out but I don't like, I'm not in love with it as much as I'm in love with the bantu knot. So um, I got this uh, a style from F. Brogan. Um, she did it another way, so I'm gonna try that way next week. And if I like it, if I like how it turns out, then I'm gonna do a video to show you guys how I do my braid out. Cause I have a mastered it to the point where I like it. Um, how to know the difference between breakage and shedding? I think I said this in my um, deep conditioning video. Don't be alarmed with hair shedding. Typically, hair sheds 50 to 100 strands daily. Each hair follicle has a cycle of growth, which eventually will lead to death. Every
everyone has a different growth cycle. Shedding is different from breakage. If you see a white bulb, when the hair falls out, it is a which is a hair follicle, this is considered um, shedding. If you don't see the follicle, which is the little white bulb on your hair, that will be considered breakage. Usually that strand of hair is a, a, um, a lot smaller than the hair that comes out with the follicle. Protect your hair at night. This is so important and now I know the importance of, of this. Because I never tied my hair down at night and um, now I really enjoy it because I am like seven weeks post and before my seven weeks post did not look like this. Like my hair looks it still looks it still looks straight and um, it's still very very manageable and I love that I could do this to uh hair that is seven weeks post and this is all because I wrap and tie down at night. It just makes it much more manageable and it um, protects my ends. My ends aren't hard or dry and brittle anymore. Um, one, another thing I love, when I wash, I'm able to go straight this week and like do braid outs and go big the other week, which is what I've been doing because last week I did braid outs and so my hair was super big. You saw that in my um, video, my Christian video, my hair was big and then my hair is now a little bit more flat but it still has some volume so I love that option always sleep in a silk or satin scarf or bonnet or use a silk or satin pillowcase sleeping with a cotton scarf or pillowcase will cause your hair to dry out cotton is very observant observant and it will absorb moisture from your hair Avoid hair stylists who don't value healthy hair, and there are a lot of them out there. Some stylists focus more on hair styling and less on hair health. Find a stylist who specializes in healthy hair. If you, if your stylist is scissors happy, um, heat happy, and chemical happy, you will never see results. That's the moment for you to sit and think. What is my stylist? Which category does she fall in? Uh, make it simple. Find a simple hair regimen that works for you. Be patient and consistent. Stick to your regimen and don't and don't give up despite your hair setbacks. Normally, hair grows one fourth to half of an inch per month. Be patient and give your hair the extra TLC it needs. All right. So now I'm going to tell you guys about making a basic. I'm going to give you the most basic hair regimen. Um, to get started, you will need a clarifying shampoo. I told you guys what that was. A moisturizing shampoo. Remember this? Um, I'm not going to that just now. A moisturizing deep conditioner. A protein um, deep conditioner. A leave-in conditioner. A moisturizer. And natural oil. A white teeth comb. And a silk or satin scarf or bonnet. Shampoo your hair with moisturizing um, shampoo once, once or twice a month, preferably sulfate free. Using a moisturizing deep conditioner with with heat for at least 30 minutes every week and after every shampoo. Always follow up with leave-in conditioner. Use a water-based moisturizer. I told you guys how you would know what is a water-based um, moisturizer morning and night and then seal with a moisturizer or natural oil the morning and night is totally optional i told you guys to just look at what your hair needs you, you can tell if your hair needs moisture always wear a silk or satin um scarf or bonnet to bed this is your hair regimen guys now i have everything down below in the bottom bar so you can um maybe copy and paste to your computer and try to work with the hair regimen uh relax at least every eight weeks if you can go beyond that will be better do not uh, do a protein treatment when needed whenever hair feels very um, limb musky or like over soft if you feel if you start feeling like it's too soft then you need a protein treatment 
um, we typically ca we typically call protein treatment in the Caribbean steaming. So that's um, what it is. Trim when needed. Use a clarifying shampoo to remove buildup at least once or twice a month, depending on the amount of products you use. Use a white teeth comb to detangle your hair. Um, you will experience less breakage. Now, if you continue to use this comb, I, I can I can guarantee you because I've been using it since I started my journey, you notice less breakage because I was using a rat tail comb to comb on my hair all the time. And when you're combing out your hair, you want to start like you want to start at the ends and then work your way up. I was doing this and then coming down. It needs to start at the ends because if you do that, you will make a bulk right here like a knot. And then you have to try to comb it out and then you know your hair starts falling out so you really need to start from the ends and then work your way up um this is for building um a hair regimen for newbies the most important key to building a solid regimen is finding your own hair tolerance everyone's hair is unique what works for you, what works for someone else may not work for you hair can be moisturized supple one day and dry and brittle the next. It's mo it's important that you build a regimen around these factors and address these circumstances within your hair regimen. This is a tip. The more you do with your hair chemically, the more moisture and protein your hair will need. For example, like if you your hair is relaxed and colored, if your hair is relaxed, it will need um a lot of TLC. But if your hair is relaxed and color treated, it needs much more than somebody else's hair who's just relaxed. Moisturizing shampoo. Um, these ingredients, uh, for the moisturizing shampoo, I told you that it should be used um, once or twice a month and it's sulfate free. Um, I will give you some examples of those shampoos. Cream of Nature, the red and green label. Um, Ken Kenra Moisturizing Shampoo, um, Neutrogena's Triple Moisture Cream, you have Elastic QP cream, condi cream Conditioning Shampoo, and for the clarifying shampoo, some examples of those are the Pantene Pro V, um, Suave, Organics, those are some of the neutralizing, um, not neutralizing, clarifying shampoos. Um, another thing ladies, when you straighten your hair, when you relax your hair, please try and neutralize after you would have washed out the um, relaxer. It's so important for you to do that. Um, some protein conditioners. Organic root stimulator, hair mayonnaise, hair mayonnaise the Apple G um, 2 minute reconstructor. And motion CPR and the elastic QP. I told you yesterday that the elastic QP has one. Then you have the um, Cantu Shea Butter for leave-in um, conditioners. You have the um, organic, the one that I showed you yesterday, Herbalessence's Long-Term Relationship has a good leave-in conditioner. You have Neutrogena's um, Triple Moisture Silk Touch Leave-In Conditioner. Uh, for the water-based moisturizers, these are some. Um, organic Root Stimulator Olive Oil. You have the uh, carrot oil so for the Caribbean girls I know you would more um, readily get organic food stimulator which is a good buy or the Cantu Shea Butter because um, we don't really have this wide variety here which is you know for the natural oils um, I showed you yesterday how to seal add, adding a light coat of oil to the ends of your hair and you know work it up don't overdo it here are some examples of some light oils extra virgin olive oil that's what I'm currently right now I'm um, virgin olive oil is what I'm using on my ends all the time that's what I've been using from the beginning of my journey um, sometimes um, I did start mixing my deep conditioner and I would put castor oil in it and I have been putting peppermint oil to my roots for the stimulation of growth. Um, so that's all castor oil, coconut oil, ahoba oil, or um, sunflower seed oil. So there you guys have it.
happy here.